if you learn to implement what I'm going to talk about in this video, my promise to you is that you will never procrastinate again. Hi guys, um, you're welcome to another video here and I'm talking again about procrastination. I put up a video a while ago um, and it was about how to stop procrastinating. And you know, I figured I'd put out the video and that would be that because you know, it was pretty clear I thought. But I'm beginning to realize, you know, it's not okay just to put out one video and, and expect that to be that. I kind of need to explain this in a, a few different ways so that if someone's struggling to grasp this idea, um, it'll make more sense to them. Okay, I might have to explain it a few more times because it is quite different to the advice you will normally hear about procrastination. What we're going to talk about is you right now in your life and your future self. Okay, I want you to start thinking about yourself and your future self you in five minutes, you in an hour, you five years from now, um, as a relationship, okay, that's going on between you and your future self, just like a relationship with any other person. So I'm going to outline how you can stop procrastinating using a fear we have, okay, because procrastination, putting off of important things, things that we think are important at least, is all fear-based. So what if we could start to use the fear to actually work for us? So the question I always ask is, um, well, what is your biggest fear? What is the biggest fear of a person who is a procrastinator? Okay, what is it? So let's say it could be, I'm not gonna be successful. It could be, I'm afraid that I'm gonna fail at this. So it could be anything, you know, it could be your fitness goal, it could be college, it could be anything, a professional goal. I'm afraid that I'm going to fail. Now here is the thing, that is not the fear, okay, that is not the fear. The, the biggest fear we have when it comes to procrastination about some kind of a pro uh, project in our life or something in our life is that I will fail to follow through, follow through. Okay, I will fail to follow through. Now I'm gonna highlight that. This is our biggest fear when it comes to anything in terms of our motivation or a goal we have in life, right? I will fail to follow through. I won't show up, okay? What if I asked you the question, Let's say you have something that's important to you and you're going to, you know, you've put it as a priority. It's something that I have to do. You've told yourself it's very important. And if I ask you, okay, you're going to do that. What are the chances? How sure are you that you will actually do that now that you've set that as a target for yourself or a goal? And this is the procrastinator. The procrastinator is no has no confidence in whether or not they will show up to their future self, okay? They might say, well, you know, it's 50-50. I'm 50% 50 sure that I will be there, okay? Now, that's not good. That causes anxiety, okay? That makes us very, very anxious. I used to be a chronic procrastinator. Now, for me, it showed up in my life when I was in college, okay? But it can be in any aspect of your life, right? This putting off. I'm going to do that. I need to do that. And then failing to follow through. I was like this. I had no certainty whatsoever that if I said I would do something, that I would follow through and do it. Now, how did I change this? I became aware of what was going on, okay? So I would say here I was in my present life and I would tell myself, you know, I'd speak to myself and I'd say, I have to, I have to do it. Um, it's important. In fact, it's very important. And then I would say to myself, okay, at 8 p.m., I'm going to start work. And that's me in my present 
decision making. OK, where I was right there, I would say 8 p.m. I'm going to start. I'd have an intention for myself. And here is me in the future. OK, and my future self. Again, remember, think about this like an actual relationship in your life. My future self would hear this and say, hope to see you. Now, it's more of a hope than anything, because I'm not really sure that I'm going to be there. OK, now think about what this would be like if, if it was a relationship between two people. If I said I was going to meet a friend at eight o'clock and I wasn't even sure I was going to show up. OK, or if I was, you know, imagine going like on a date and not even being sure as to whether or not you'd show up. Or imagine even um, being in a relationship with someone and continually not showing up. How would that person start to feel about the relationship? They'd feel totally disrespected and undervalued, right? So that's what happens. Um, that's why self-esteem goes down through the floor because of this habitual procrastination. So now, this, remember, here I am, and I have an intention to start at 8, 8 p.m. And my secret fear is I'm going to fail to follow through. I'm not going to show up, okay? It's not about failing. It's not about anything else. It's just that I don't know if I'll do it. Because when I ask people, um, what if I could guarantee you that you will actually start to do what's required? How would you feel? Their anxiety level goes down, right? They think, well, if that's possible, I would feel amazing, right? And they all worry about outcomes and pass, fail, win, lose. <clears throat> it all goes away, okay? It's all about making this 100%. I know I'll, I'll do what's necessary, okay? Now, so here I am at, at I have an intention for 8 p.m. This is 8 p.m., okay? There's my future self, it's 8 p.m. Now, right now, it's, we'll say, 6 p.m. And so I start out, and that's the timeline. I need to go from there to there. Now, I want you to start thinking about your anxiety level. What happens? Well, I've set the intention. I feel pretty good right now, so my anxiety level is low. Now, I'll notice the closer it gets to the start time, when I'm supposed to be at 8 p.m., I notice a thing that starts to happen. My anxiety starts to go up. Okay, my anxiety is, getting, is going up and up and up. Because I'm telling myself, I have to be there. It's very important, okay? It's very, very important that I be there. We have this, we, we dramatize things in our mind. And the closer and closer it gets to 8 p.m., there's more and more anxiety building up slowly and slowly and slowly. You will know what this means. You know what this feels like, right? Because I'm not sure I'm going to be there for this really, really important thing that I have to be there for which I don't maybe like, I don't really want to do, but I feel it's necessary for me to do it, right? So as the anxiety goes up and up and up, you know what I start to tell myself? I start to tell myself things like, well, maybe I don't have to be there. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe I can do it later. Okay, so we start to tell ourselves, I can do it later. Now, this was my favorite catchphrase when I was a procrastinator. Until I realized that I only started to say this to myself because I was getting anxious. Okay? I was getting more and more anxious. I wasn't sure whether or not I would be there to meet my future self on time. And I had become so low in self-esteem because of past failures to show up. I knew it was a painful process I was engaged with, right? This self-sabotage. And I was really, really hurting from it. So I would, be, I would always tell myself, I can do it later. I can do it later. Now, here is what I want to tell you, okay? There are, there are two things you can do and one thing you can't do. The first thing you can do is you can show up, meet your future self at 8 p.m. and do what's necessary. Perfect. 
The other thing you can do is fail to show up at 8 p.m. That's actually okay, okay? But if you do fail to show up at 8 p.m. for the important thing, you cannot say, well, I'll start at 8.30 instead now. That's another promise to my future self. And I'm still no sure as to whether or not I'll be there. What needs to happen is you need to respect that you've disrespected your future self, right? That is the one thing you have to eliminate. So how do you do that? Okay, you have to stop doing that. Like, I mean, you have to cut that out of your life like it's a cancer, okay? That's one thing I stop doing and the people I work with as clients. This is the one thing I'm trying to tell them over and over again. Only make promises to your future self like you would to a friend or a date or anything else that you know 100% you're going to keep and you intend to keep. Now, if you fail to be there, you need to say, I am sorry to yourself, okay? You need to just slow down and say, how can I make this right? And how you make it right is you give the future self some space, okay? That means you need to start using, this is, I'll put it this way, you need to start using your fear because the anxiety is the problem. The anxiety builds and builds and builds, right? The anxiety builds and builds and builds. You need to use this as a consequence for what's taken place here so that you won't continue to do it. So your fear is, I will fail to follow through. If you fail to follow through, this has to become a reality, right? You no longer are allowed to follow through out of respect for your future self. Your future self needs to take a breather from you because you've done that. And they need to be more sure, okay? Their hopes were let down, right? They need to be more sure about whether or not you will show up. Now, on a practical level, this looks like if you fail to show up, you lose the right to do that thing, that activity for the rest of the day, at least the rest of the day, okay? So if I say 6 p.m., I don't show up for 6 p.m., that means I will lose the right to follow through for the rest of the evening. There's no more indecision and making promises like I, I did here, okay? So after 8 p.m., I've got 8 p.m. until the, I go to sleep in which I'm not allowed to follow through. Now, you might be saying to yourself, that doesn't help me. How is that going to help me? That's not going to help me do what's necessary. You're dead wrong about that. Remember I said you can do two things. You can either show up or you can not show up. But you cannot do this lying thing, okay? Intention, failure to follow through. We need to get rid of that first and, first and foremost. So by implementing this, this consequence it's it's a learning that's taken place there are consequences to this if you fail to implement some kind of a consequence this pattern will continue for days weeks years okay constant indecision constant uncertainty as to whether or not I'll show up and do what's necessary constantly undermining myself and my relationship with my future self procrastination okay we need to start practicing i won't tolerate that anymore in my life okay now how it looks is try this and remember the problem isn't failing to follow through the problem is failing to follow through and then making another plan okay that's what we can't do right so let's say you try this today 6 p.m i'm going to start 8 p.m sorry i'm going to start at 8 p.m and you don't follow through, do not do anything else related to that goal for the rest of the day. Tomorrow you will start again, okay? And you, with a, a, a greater self-awareness and self-examination of what's actually taking place here in this relationship, okay? Can I heal the relationship? Tomorrow, I'll start again tomorrow, right? That's the real thing that you have to put off for tomorrow, right? You have to respect that what has taken place here. You know, there has been an injury there to your future self. And that's the most important thing you have in your life, right? So we can't have that anymore. Now, let's say you do this one day 
and you fail to follow through and you do what I tell you to do, which is you, you no longer make any more plans about this goal for the rest of the evening. Day one, if you, if you do that, something will register. There's a consequence. I've implemented the consequence. And I've learned that making promises and not following through has a consequence. The next day, you'll try again and you may procrastinate again. But if you continue to do it, right, if you continue to do it, usually it doesn't take more than a few days, something changes in your mind, right? You begin to realize the importance of this, this relationship. And you begin to realize that when I'm setting these times for myself, I need to be super careful, right? And I need to mean it because there will be consequences if I don't mean it. We're using this fear to our advantage. I can tell you 100% sincerely, my certainty, uh, my percentage rate for if I tell myself I'm going to do something is now 100%. Right? It used to be less than 50%. Right? I had no idea if I'd show up or not. I was co in constant indecision about starting, um, not knowing whether or not I would. Uh, a lot of self-esteem problems, you know, very low self-esteem, partially because of this. Um, but do it for a few days and you will realize, this could be anything. If you're, going to, if you're talking about going to the gym every day after work and you're failing to follow through, okay, get real, okay? Look at this relationship. The most important thing is right here, when you're in the present moment, you need to take some time, you need to realize this actually isn't the important thing. What I'm working on, or this goal I have, is not the important thing. The important thing is this, my future self, and the respect I will give to my future self. Okay, it's all about self-respect, and um, building that relationship of trust with yourself. If you trust yourself, there's nothing to be afraid of. This goes away. It goes away, your big fear goes away. If you can trust yourself, you start off small. You're not gonna go from trusting yourself um, in no way, shape, or form to complete trust. But it actually doesn't take that long. As long as you follow through with what I'm telling you here and implement the consequence, do not give yourself the chance to do it again if in that same day you have procrastinated. Okay? I'm being repetitive now. <laughs> I thought I was actually being repetitive because, you know, I've talked about this in a few other videos, but people contact me and they say, you need to explain this more because I don't get it. Okay? Hopefully this little diagram makes it more obvious, right? It's all about self-respect, okay? It's all about self-respect and self-trust. So I guarantee you, the, 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 the other good thing, the final thing I'll say on this is, let's say you do this and you set a, a start time for 6 p.m., 8 p.m. comes around and you procrastinate. You're not there. You're not at your desk where you should be or you're not in the gym or you're not going out the door to go to the gym. Realize I've procrastinated Say, okay, I can't tolerate procrastination. That's the one thing I can't do anymore. So I stop. And now I'm not doing anything related to that goal for the rest of the day. Think about it. Now you've got complete, the rest of your night completely free to do something else. Okay. But it's not going to be indecision about whether or not I go to the gym or whether or not I study or whether or not I do, whether or not I do X, Y, or Z. Okay. So it's really a no lose solution to this. You're just going to teach yourself how to respect yourself. Like, imagine, you know, you failed to show up to meet someone for a date at 8 p.m. You wouldn't say, well, oh God, I didn't go to that date. I should go to the date at, at 8.30, right? I should go to the date at 10 p.m. You know, that's not how it works. So it's not how it works with you either, right? When you have self-respect. You might be lucky you know, on a, with that person, and if you apologize and you realize I've hurt that other person, they might say, I'll meet, I'll meet you tomorrow, okay? Or I'll meet you in a few days' time. But, you know, only as long as you start to take it more seriously, right? We need to take ourselves more seriously. Now, when it comes to this, I only want you to be aware of this whole process when it comes to your top priority whatever that might be for you. I don't want you to start overanalyzing every little step in your life, right? 
oh, I'm procrastinating about um, going to make myself a cup of coffee, okay? Just be aware of that stuff, but practice this on a small scale with one aspect of your life, particularly one aspect where maybe you're procrastinating a lot, okay? And watch yourself heal is the word. This is healing. We're no longer hurting ourselves through this project or this priority that we have. Guys, I'll leave it there. If you have any other questions, I can make more videos on this. Please subscribe to this channel. Please share this video with as many people as you can. Um, you can also contact me online uh, at my website if you want to talk about this, okay? If you want to start getting serious about, okay, I have a problem with procrastination or I feel a bit aimless in life, I talk about motivation and I talk about how to heal the relationship you have with yourself and to understand yourself better and really what's going on underneath all the, the noise and everything else in our mind, okay? So you can contact me for one-to-one -one sessions. Guys, I hope you liked it. Um, it's, a, it's a subject I'm very passionate about. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take care.